I, but I used to play like in the church band and shit, which was a, like a pretty cool, like easy way into like performing in front of people and getting used to it. Mm -hmm. Just start small and then <laughs> can get used to being on a stage and stuff. Yeah. I was in a little bit of debt and worked at a factory, paid off all my debt, had a little bit of money left and moved to LA. Yeah, the first day we met is when we wrote I Don't Want It At All. No way, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then we've been working ever since. Hi, and this is Lauren Angelo Sidewalk Talk. Today I'm here with Lil Aaron. What's up? <laughs> So was it two years ago? How long ago was it when we first met in Hong Kong? I think it might have been three years. Three years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's like pretty much before I started Sidewalk. Yeah, that was fun. You were there like visiting. Yeah, my yeah. dad My dad went for like some business thing and I just tagged along because I wanted to go to Hong Kong. <laughs> it was tight. Yeah. And you showed me all the cool spots? <laughs> yeah, we went to like LKF and stuff. <laughs> Super fire. Yeah. So you were born in Indiana? Indiana, yeah. Yeah. Where where exactly? Um I was born in I'm pretty sure Lafayette, Indiana. And then when I was young I moved to Ohio for like a couple years. And then like the place that I'm like that I like would call my hometown mm -hmm. is this place Goshen, Indiana. And that's like super north, kinda like two hours away from Chicago. Oh, Indiana. okay. And that's where I go back to every time I go back. That's where my parents live. And mm -hmm. and all your extended family is all in Indiana? Yeah. Yeah. All, all my, both of my sisters, my brother live in Indiana, and like most of my cousins and shit live in Indiana. Mm -hmm. What careers are your parents in? Uh, my mom is in education. So she's a literacy collaborative, I think is what the title is. Mm -hmm. She basically just like, helps the school systems improve their like reading um, curriculum. And then my dad does investments. Oh, so where do you think of your creative side from? <laughs> well I think I think it's like a bit of both. I'm a good mix of both of like the creative, like obviously my profession is writing, so that comes from like my mom's side and then my dad's very like business minded and focused and like goal oriented so I think it's a good mix of both of both of their talents. Mm -hmm. What kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up? <laughs> Mostly Christian music but I do remember a Beatles hits CD that my dad would play all the time. That was pretty tight. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah so it was a really Christian upbringing right? Yeah. Yeah mm -hmm. it was very yeah, very Christian. Mm -hmm. So you had to go to church every week, or how was it? More than once a week. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> Did it influence you back then? 100%, 100%, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't necessarily veer off that path until I was like 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. I, but I used to play like in the church band and shit, which was a, like a pretty cool, like easy way into like performing in front of people and getting used to it. Mm -hmm. Just start small and then... <laughs> Can get used to being on stage and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> How do you describe yourself back then growing up? Mm, I mean, I was always wild. You know, I always wanted to stick out of the crowd. I always was wearing like goofy ass clothing. Um, I got really into like the whole MySpace thing when I was really young, like 12. So like, super like scene, emo kid. Mm -hmm. um, hot Topic wearing girl pants wearing, the fucking studded belt wearing. <laughs> so. Was there like a turning point from your Christian face to that or were you always just no, like no, a No, no, because it kind of overlaps, Christian? it kind of overlaps for a second, right? Yeah. There's like the, the like Christian metalcore scene. Oh, so you were in that? You were no, in I mean, no, but like, I, I guess kind of, I went to all those shows that like, you know when they have like, metalcore shows at like a church? Mm -hmm. Like there was that scene that I was like a part of, but I was always making like, I was in bands and stuff, but it was always like pop punk bands. And then I had like an acoustic project where I wanted to be Never Shout Never. So I would like be playing like acoustic love songs, like right before metalcore bands. Mm -hmm. And your parents funny. were always chill of you doing like the pop punk stuff? Yeah. I mean, they always supported my music. They're, they're, they've been very, very supportive. I mean, both my parents have like 
I, I don't know if they ever really professionally pursued music, but they they both like been very involved in music and would always my dad would always play guitar around me and like they love music. So I think my, and my older brother is really into music and like he is in a couple bands and he's he kind of like was the first one that got me into the music side of things. So they've always been like around it and okay with it, which mm -hmm. is cool. And you kind of live like a double life through MySpace, right? <laughs> How so? Well, I know you said in your previous interviews that you had like your life and then your internet life. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody did back then. You had like, you could just be whoever you wanted on the internet. Not that I was like being a catfish or anything. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, you like, I don't think my parents really knew that I was on there. Um, so it was cool to ha kind of have that freedom of like trying out different versions of myself and like coming into my own skin especially like I, I don't want to say I was like super sheltered by any means but there were certain things that like you know it was easier to be on the internet than like in a Christian home environment yeah and did you meet a lot of make a lot of friends during that time oh yeah, yeah. I mean I'm I there's a few of us that go way back to that time um Ari Lauv, mm -hmm. we were friends from like 10 years ago on MySpace. Oh, wow. um, Trevor from Cheat Codes, we were friends from like 10 years ago on MySpace. Um, who else? There's like a couple other, like the Ready Set it was like back in that scene. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of cool like coming up from that and then like what this iteration of music is, like a couple of us are still like doing our thing, which is super tight. Mm -hmm. And then your first bands were formed with your high school friends? Mm hmm but I was always the youngest one. I was like, when I was, well, because I only really went to like a year and a half of high school. So I would be like the freshman and then like the rest of the band would be seniors type shit. Mm hmm and how far did you get with it? Was it just like playing locally? Just regionally, you know. Yeah. Maybe a couple shows a couple hours away, but like. Mm -hmm. So were you always the singer or? Yeah, um, when, I, when I was super young, I was playing drums, but by the time I was in high school playing in bands, I mean, I think I started my first band that was playing shows when I was in like seventh grade, so middle school. But I was, yeah, I was doing the, the vocals. Mm -hmm. And were you guys making original music? <clears throat> my first band, I think we just covered like the Killers and like the Arctic Monkeys and shit. But then after that, it was all original music. So when did you actually start like songwriting yourself? I mean, I guess I was songwriting back then. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of like, copying the format of like songs that I liked and just like switching out the words and melodies mm -hmm. um, but I would consider myself like five years into writing song writing songs like consciously as a songwriter like knowing what I'm doing and at least attempting to write a good song mm -hmm. and how did you find Broken Side? Is that how you say it? Yeah, how did I find them? Yeah uh, well I mean I was de I definitely was fan of their music back in the day mm -hmm. um, but Adam from Ham, Ham on Everything mm -hmm. um, like most recently how I got back introduced to them was he was throwing a show well I guess Michael from Broken Side was like ha had hit me up on like Instagram and we kind of DM'd but Adam was putting on a show and then with them and then I got on that show and then we kind of just met and decided to do a song on their last album, which is kind of a banger. <laughs> it's a sleeper, I, I, you know. I don't know how many people really know about it, but it's it's a banger. Mm -hmm. And so, we'll go back in time, but so when you were finishing high school, where did you think your career was going to be at that point? Where, you, where did I think I would end up? Or like what, like after graduating, like the college cross your mind or? No, I dropped yeah. out of high school. I wasn't even, college wasn't even on my radar. Also like during high school, what were you doing in your time then? Uh, like when I was in high school? Or like after you dropped out? <laughs> I dropped out and I went on tour and I was touring with a couple bands, like this band All Star Weekend and just like kind of bands in that like, I was still like young, I was like 17. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of like, there was this scene of like, um, like Disney bands, I guess, that I, I kind of knew some people in because I played some shows with them. And then 
I guess just because I was so young, it worked out for me to go. I would like do merch for these bands or like just be on the road with them because all their fans were really young. So having like a little 17 year old sell merch was like kind of perfect. Mm -hmm. And that was my first introduction into like the major scale touring and that kind of like the bigger, you know, the non local music scene, like the the real shit. And then when we would come through LA, every time I came to LA, I was like, that's where I need to be. So. Mm -hmm. And back then you were also booking shows, right? Yeah, kind of. I, I mean, back, back in like, when you're in like a local scene, you kind of have to like have your fingers in every part of it mm -hmm. in order for anything to get like done, you know? So yeah, for my bands, I would always like book the shows yeah. or like find other bands that lived a couple hours away and like trade shows and shit like that. How did it click to you that you wanted to do music for the rest of your life back then? Um, I, uh, I don't know. When I was when I was super young, I was I was doing like I was super into acting. I thought I wanted to be an actor. Oh really? Why? I don't know. I just did like all the musicals and stuff. Oh, and, like, and then you're I like did, a drama kid. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely was a drama kid. And then I did like a couple like you know like film or, like on like little short film shits. Mm -hmm. And then I thought that was like, I, I thought that was like it. I was like, boom, this is it. And then when I like found like performing live with music, I was just like, okay, wait, this is it. So I'll probably say since like sixth or seventh grade, I knew that like this is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And what happened after you were like touring with all those bands or doing the merch? What was the next step after that? <clears throat> uh, I went home. I was in a little bit of debt, I fucking worked at a factory, paid off all my debt, had a little bit of money left to move to LA. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah, because you didn't, you were just, oh, but you already had your manager back then, right? Because you were crashing on his couch, or how, how no, did No, 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 that's, that's, no, that's a little bit later in the time. Yeah. So I came out to LA, um, I was crashing at a different friend's couch, and then I started interning, at Milk and Honey, and then a month after I was interning there, Nick mm -hmm. Warner, my manager, shout out Nick, um, started interning there, and then he kind of like zoomed up through the ranks. And then I was kind of dabbling in the songwriting shit, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do yet. I just knew I wanted to like be in music, and I was kind of just interning there to soak in as much information mm -hmm. as I could. So then I left that company and like... Were you working other jobs at this point? Yeah, I was always kind of like doing whatever on the side to make money, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of it was like graphic design and shit. Oh, okay. Um, and then when I left, me and Nick were already like really good friends. So I was just like, hey, either I'm going to manage myself or you're going to manage me. So he started managing me and that's kind of like... Mm -hmm. So did Lil Aaron come about like before you moved to LA, like the name itself or...? No, Lil Aaron, the name came about in LA. I was on a little road trip with a couple of my friends and I don't even remember. We were just like, we would just always come up with stupid rap names. Mm -hmm. Like young, whatever. You know, just like the typical shit. And then yeah. someone just said a little Aaron and like, we thought it was hilarious. So they just started calling me little Aaron and I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go with this. Mm -hmm. And is that the first time you had a moniker? Like a solo? Uh, yeah, I went by when I was like, not even like real life DJing, like fake DJing at just at my he friend's house parties, I went by Chaz Bay. That's rare. <laughs> if anyone, there's like a rare few people that know oh, about really? Chaz Bay. <laughs> um, and <laughs> that, so that was like a little short lived one, but yeah, Lil Aaron's like the, the main moniker. Mm -hmm. And while you were interning, were already putting stuff out under Lil Aaron, or what was the timeline? Uh, let me think. I might have put. Uh, I the first song I put out as Little Aaron was was Damn with Y2K. Um, and I'm trying to think. That was either like right before. No, I think that was right after I left. Right after I stopped into. Oh okay. Yeah. And then what made you finally want to put out music? Uh. I don't know, I had done it I had done it for so long, it was like something I had done like since I was 
15, 16, mm -hmm. and I kind of stopped for a couple years when I came to LA just because I was a little bit frustrated and confused, didn't know why things hadn't taken off. So that's when I was just interning, trying to just learn as much as I could. And then when me and Y2K linked up, we just made a cool vibe that I kind of, at the time, I, I hadn't really heard that kind of sound before. So we just ran with it. Mm -hmm. And then how did you get your momentum initially? I mean, that song did really well, but and in, in relative to where we were, it was that was like a lot of momentum off the off the bat. And then mm -hmm. me and Y2K kept doing stuff. We dropped a couple other songs. Um, I don't really even know think where the momentum came from. And then I was just kind of just doing like the sound, the 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 ranks with the songwriting shit, and just working with whoever would work with me. Mm -hmm. Actually, what did what clicked to you that you want to do more so, like behind the scenes stuff? Well, so when I was interning at Milk and Honey, they managed like a bunch of songwriters and producers, and in in like my past, you know, projects, I, one of the things I was always struggling with is like I would always I was just inspired by so many different sounds that it was hard to like lock down a, like a singular sound, mm -hmm. and. When I saw like all these songs come in from different, <laughs> from different like producers and songwriters, like one day they'd make like a pop song, the next day they'd make like a rap song, the next day they'd make a country song. So I was like, oh shit, this kind of like works for my personality, of like wanting to try everything. So that's when it kind of clicked to me that songwriting could be the right lane for me. Mm -hmm. And then was it easy going from and then starting to they were putting you in sessions, working with people that came really natural to you. Yeah, I mean, I think there's all, there's, it's just like starting anything new. Mm -hmm. There's always like a little bit of a learning curve, but I've always kind of been, I like to think I'm like pretty easy to get along with, easy going. So it was, it was easy for me to be like, it be in a room with people and, you know, just create. But I would say it took like a good year, year and a half till I, Till like I really, really got like a good grip on how things went in that mm -hmm. world, and like I really started making dope songs. Mm -hmm. And was pop music something that you always liked, or you realized like in LA, like everyone is making pop? No, I, I loved pop music. I just realized that I was listening to like, like even like 303. That's kind of like a yeah. It's like a scene version of pop music. They're still making like great pop songs. So like. I, I realized that a lot of stuff I was listening to was pop. I mean, and I loved like all the Katy Perry stuff back in the day and like stuff like that. So when I got into songwriting, I don't know. It's also like the the highest. I kind of see it as like the highest tier of songwriting, even though most people like don't look at it that way because it's so simple. But it's really like the most difficult to write a song that like yeah the most that like everybody likes. Yeah. You know? Like, it's easy to be like, oh, this niche, I know what this niche likes, but, like, pop songwriting is, like, because, like, what is pop music? Pop music is just the, the most universal, like, because it's, it's got elements of fucking EDM and rap and sometimes even country, like, it's just, like, what's the most popular sound that everybody's into right now type music, so, yeah, I think when I got into songwriting, I was, I was definitely doing a lot more, like, at the beginning, more like rap or urban stuff, but that's kind of what pop music turned into anyway. Yeah. And then how long after did you sign your deal? Let's think here. So I've been in LA five years, probably like... Probably like a year and a half or so. Maybe two years into doing, like, going head in on the songwriting stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, what made you want to sign? How did you meet? Um, yeah, actually through my friend Ari Lauf. Okay. He kind of introduced me to the people over at the company I'm at, and then I just started meeting with them, hanging out with them, playing them records, and then things just kind of yeah. Were you shopping around other? Yeah, was, I was, meeting, always I was meeting with everyone. Sure. I was meeting with everyone and like just getting a feel for everything. But 
I just had a really good feeling about prescription where yeah. I'm at now, and so we went with them, and it's been great ever since. I love, I love the whole team there. Mm -hmm. So is it as an artist or is it as like a writer? Or what's the? Well, with a publishing deal, it's no, real, it's not really. Oh, okay, difference. publishing. Yeah. But pretty much when I met with every other publisher, like the main question people would be like, "Oh, are you a writer or are you a songwriter?" I mean, are you a writer or are you an artist? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Like, are you are you gonna write songs for other people or for yourself? And I was always just like, I don't know, whichever one I wake up and feel like, like feel like doing that day. And Prescription was very open to me doing both, and they wanted to help on both sides, so mm -hmm. felt like the right fit. Did you already have a lot of like credits out at that point? I had nothing. Really? Yeah. So so were you just showing them what you could? That's really. I mean, I feel like they actually did the same. Emily Warren is with them, right? Yeah. 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 Like when she signed with them, she didn't even have much, but they like believed in you guys. Yeah, yeah. I think I think their whole team over there has a really good ear. And just like a good sensibility of like who's got what it takes. Because it's, you know, it kind of comes down to if you have good taste, eh? If you like can write songs and like if you have like the drive. Because I feel like anyone can really do this, like the whole songwriting thing. It's just like not an easy job. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna take a long time before like it pays off. So like I think it's pretty easy to spot like I see people that like don't necessarily have any credits under their belt, but I'm just like you have the work ethic and like the taste level to like push this to the top. Mm -hmm. Do you think it gave you pressure like without putting anything out, but now they're expecting stuff from you? Definitely, yeah. definitely. But they also kind of like helped me get into the right rooms and meet the right people to where because like sometimes you don't have credits or you don't have releases under your belt just because you can be really talented but just not in the rooms with the right people or you could have the right song but not know how to get it to the right people yeah so they kind of helped facilitate all that and since then it's been really amazing mm -hmm. and is, is it through them that you met Kim Petras mm -hmm. yeah nice so I guess that was like when she first came because you've known each other for a while now or yeah the first day we met is when we wrote I don't want it at all no way yeah. that's insane yeah. wow <laughs> and then we've been working ever since. We've been working a bunch on her album recently, which sounds like so fucking amazing. It's like some of the best pop songs I've personally ever heard. It might be a little biased because I wrote that, <laughs> but <laughs> it's so good. It's like she's such a fucking star. Yeah, she is. She's I stand, amazing. I stand her. <laughs> and then you also was you co-wrote the boyfriend Justin Bieber, right? No, oh, no, I didn't do that. You didn't do that? Wait, I don't know why I read that then. Okay, no, no, that's a, it's a common misconception. People think I did that. Black Bear did that. Oh, okay. Some, you need to, someone needs to change some bio or something. Uh, like, otherwise, you'll keep getting yeah, it. Yeah, I don't even know where some of these, like, b internet bios get their information. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's what some, I've heard. I don't know exactly where that one came from, but I've heard that a bunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just because I work with Black Bear a bunch, and Black yeah. Bear worked on that. So people kind of, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Actually, how did you meet Black Bear? Uh, I would see him at parties and shit when I first came out here, and I was always like a really big fan. Mm -hmm. I've been like a big fan of his for a long time. So I would say like the first couple times I met him, I was probably really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, bro, we should work, we should work. And he was like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and it was when I was like wrapping up Glowing Pains that he kind of heard from some people about it. And then he hit me up to come through and play it for him. And I played it for him and he was just like, yo, this is dope. I wanna just help however I can. Mm -hmm. So then he was just kind of helping, like tweeting about it, posting about it, amping it up and everything. And then he took me on the road and that's kind of when, for the artist project, when the momentum started really gearing up. And then since then we just, we've been friends. We, on the road we wrote like a whole project. And then we've just been kind of like friends and collaborators ever since. Mm -hmm. How did you meet Kiara? Um, I met Kiara back in the day because a bunch of my friends are kind of like working on her early music. Um, I was actually the first session she did in LA, which oh, was wow. sick. And then, I mean, I think she just kind of like got catapulted into this LA industry bullshit. And so. Since we met so early on, we just always stayed close. And I like, you know, I hadn't really done too much at the time, but like, I kind of knew what it felt like to be like 
in LA and like not really know what's going on and all these people are like, you know, getting involved with your music and stuff. So I was just always kind of helping her out however I could and we, we rode together a bunch. So we just became really good friends early on and then just kind of stayed close. And then she brought me on tour a couple times. Yeah, we've just been really good friends mm -hmm. ever since. And how did you work with Jeremiah and Stu? Um, I was doing some sessions with Ultra, I'm pretty sure. And then I kind of I got paired up with Stu. And then we were just kind of like making a bunch of cool shit. Mm -hmm. And then that like he like played that beat, and I that song was actually like essentially like a freestyle that I just kind of threw on there and I, we didn't really know what was gonna happen but we knew like after we made it that we were like super stoked on it and he even brought up when we first wrote he was like yo I want to get Jeremiah to sing this and in my head I was like yeah that'd be sick it sounds like Jeremiah but I didn't know like you know the logistics of like whether or not it was gonna happen and then a couple months later I just like started hearing that like it was gonna happen so I hit him up and then he sent me the the bounce like I mean, I think things moved pretty quickly once they like, once they like got him on it because he he sent it to me and like a week or two later oh, wow. it was out. So that was sick though because Jeremiah is like one of my inspirations, especially melodically. I've always mm. been a big fan of like his songwriting and his melodies and like the way he delivers melodies is like one of my favorites. Mhm. Mm and how did Mini Mansion come about? And what was the turning point between that when you realized that you wanted to like work more seriously? Yeah, the mini mansion kind of happened when I got money because I was like living on Nick's couch and then oh, I got... Oh, that's when you signed the deal. Yeah, <laughs> when I signed the deal, I got my money. This thing's where it is, Kim Padres. <laughs> <laughs> when I got my money, I got like the crib and I just... I, I had just been in LA for so long crashing on other people's couches and, you know, I just felt like I wanted to pay it forward. So it's <laughs> yeah, I just like had all my homies crash at the crib. I also like loved being around my friends so it like helped mm -hmm. um but yeah but recently i've been kind of focusing on trying to make the mini mansion more of like a home less of like the party house i love to party but sometimes you got to separate that from where you go home and find peace mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's been my my recent mission mm -hmm. and did it always come naturally to you? I don't want to label it as like branding, but I mean, it kind of is like from all the green and like yeah. how your like internet portrayal. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like it's kind of thought out, like, yeah. I guess so. I, I would say it's like super organized chaos. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it is kind of something that's come to me naturally. Mm -hmm. um, I always knew, I mean, just from being in other, other projects and like, it's just so competitive yeah. doing music and, and I'd seen so many people that like I thought were incredibly talented, but like didn't have necessarily have anything that like set them apart from everyone else. So I knew early on, I was like, I just gotta do, I just gotta be me. I knew like, cause I'd tried so many things before I like really got Lil Aaron, mm -hmm. got to Lil Aaron. Like I'd been in so many other projects and had so many other things I tried. And I kind of realized it's like, okay, all I have to do is just be like unapologetically me and like, just be loud and proud, I guess, and just, I was like, my, I, my hair was like so many different colors, I would change it like every other week. And then it was just green, it was green when, when me and Y2K did damn, so I was just like, oh. fuck it, I'm gonna stay green, and then that kind of just turned into everything being green. Yeah. <laughs> and how about like how you portray yourself online? I don't know, I think it's just a stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know if it's too thought out. Do you think it's like an accurate portrayal of you as a person? Well, I get a lot of times when people meet me in real life, like, like oh, you're not an asshole. Or like, <laughs> oh, you're actually nice. And <laughs> so, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it is me. It definitely is me, it's honest, but like, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's like the like, MySpace you in the... <laughs> <laughs> maybe, may, there might be some truth to that, but... <laughs> I don't know, I'm not like going out of my way to make it like an over-exaggerated version of myself, but I would say I'm probably a little bit more like quiet in real life. But I think that's kind of everyone in, on the yeah. internet is like a little bit more quiet in real life than they are like online. Mm-hmm. And then what was the inspiration behind Homework? 
homework. Um, we were just in the studio one day, and uh, Aaron Joseph, Kim's producer, came upstairs. I think I was working on, honestly, I think I was working on songs for Rockstar Famous. Mm -hmm. And then he was just playing this guitar riff, and then we kind of started with that melody. And I don't know, I just kind of like felt like the, the guitar felt really nostalgic, so I like started writing some like super nostalgic type lyrics. And then Kim came up and then liked it and like helped with it, and then she started singing it, and I was like, oh, sick, this is out of here. Mm -hmm. So then I, I think I was still working on some other song, and they went downstairs and tracked it and I went down there I was like damn this is fucking amazing and then we just kind of layered our vocals mine with like the really low tone and hers on she hits those beautiful high notes mm -hmm. it just worked out really well I mean I love that song mm -hmm. and we collaborated on so much stuff like that was that's one of my favorite songs that we have together that's out oh nice wow so yeah what would you say are your inspirations for your music videos because <laughs> they've like gone so viral um well, like, I, I don't know, like, with, with, like, any more video and the quit video, I was, like, super inspired by, like, old Fuel by Ramen videos, like, mm -hmm. just, like, dope pop punk bands. And then there's, like, the Hot Topic video and the uh, Sadaguchi Bell video, and those are, like, trying to, like, I don't know, just, like, internet art meets nostalgia, mm -hmm. I guess trying to like make like I don't know I, I don't know like m not like meme videos but you know like <laughs> somewhere between like a meme and like a music video yeah <laughs> actually what's the decision for you to cut your hair because I feel like you've like really grown into the yeah I mean the long I, I just had long hair for so long that I was kind of over it I wasn't over it I just wanted something new I wanted mm -hmm. to change it up and I mean I was kind of stepping into a different shade of me I guess mm -hmm. um, especially musically with like the last EP that I dropped trying to be like a little bit more honest and like I don't know after like a bunch of years of making like party songs I love party songs mm -hmm. but I kind of wanted to like explore another side of me as an artist and like get more like vulnerable and honest and it just kind of seemed like a good way to um, encapsulate that visually Keep it green still, but like, new era of Lil Aaron. How would you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? I'm definitely way more mature now. Mm -hmm. um, and like, conscious of my emotions, because I'm a very emotional person. And I think when I was younger, didn't necessarily know how to like deal with it or handle it, but I've definitely gotten way better at that. Um, I don't know, in a lot of ways I think I'm like the same person I was when I was like 16, 17, just like got a crazy dream and I'm just gonna do whatever I can to make it yeah. <laughs> make it a reality and like feels like, you know, day by day can get like a little confusing, but like when you look at things like month by month or year by year, you can like really see the growth. Um, I don't know, I've always been super like goal oriented and mm -hmm. focused. I mean, I've been kind of like focused on this one path since I was 16 so I don't know I've, I've definitely gotten way better at songwriting though um, <laughs> I used to write really garbage songs <laughs> and now I write like only slightly garbage songs no, <laughs> no I write amazing songs um, but I don't know yeah I, I yeah. can definitely see the maturity of the way I like handle situations has grown mm, yeah. and I definitely like say sorry more than I used to oh. I used to be a little too prideful for that <laughs> What do you say have been your biggest challenges in your life? Challenges? I mean, to do this, uh, to do like, to live this lifestyle and like pursue this career, like I really had to sacrifice a lot. Like, you know, leaving all my friends back home, not seeing my family as much as I would like to. And like, even now that I'm out here, like and I have my friends and everything, like working like 12, 13 hour days every day. Like it's, I really had to decide that like it was this over everything so that's been a challenge but I, I think it's starting to pay off so like it's definitely been worth it um, what else I don't know just like 
trying to stay in touch with my parents and mm. like all that stuff. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Biggest challenges. I mean, being out here, like coming to LA and being broke, fucking sucks. Oh, mm -hmm. that was a challenge. Luckily, I had like a really dope friend group and support system that like helped me stay on my feet when I didn't have the means to by myself. Um, what else? Challenges. I don't know. I just always kind of challenge myself to stay true to myself and like be me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I mean, answer. staying happy in LA is a chore. Yeah. So trying to deal with that I've definitely like dealt with a lot of depression and anxiety in my life but at the end of the day it's like I'm doing what I love every day so life's beautiful mm -hmm. <laughs> what does love mean to you what does love mean I don't know I don't know shit I don't know if I'm the right person to ask for that no that's I want to hear your opinion <laughs> <laughs> like romantic love or just like any love? it could be family it could be friends I mean yeah I think love is when you care about someone or something and you're there for them mm -hmm. no matter what you know like if it's good or if it's bad the ups and downs I think that's like the kind of love that I've been shown by like my parents and my family and my good friends mm -hmm. um, I mean the same way like I love music even even when it wasn't like paying off for me or like working out yeah. it was still like the only thing i cared about so mm -hmm. i guess that's love yeah <laughs> last question what do you want to be remembered for what i want to be remembered for uh i want to be remembered for being like genuine and honest and like real but also i want to be remembered for writing like the best songs that anyone's ever heard mm -hmm. um i want to be remembered by like my friends and my family for like always being giving and generous and like there for people when they need it and I want to be remembered by like my fans or like the people that don't necessarily get to meet me just mm -hmm. like as being like an inspiration that like yeah. you can kind of do whatever you want if you put your mind to it mm -hmm. yeah this was amazing thank you so much yeah thank you <laughs> bye